We're going to talk about some basics of how to use Photoshop. In this case, I've opened an image already for a reference to kind of show you the lay of the land here. Um, Photoshop's a little different than Illustrator and InDesign in that it works predominantly in layers. Everything you add will be a layer. Unlike the other two programs we have to force it to have layers, this will do it by default. Every new thing you add, whether text, image, etc., will go ahead and add to layers. Down the side here you have panels that allow you to edit. Um, I don't use these personally as much beyond the cutting, which there's a separate video available to you to talk about how to cut objects out. The paint dropper is often helpful, especially if I'm trying to match a color or to figure out what color is in here. Um, the text tool comes in handy. There are dodge and burn tools. Um, the cloning tools can come in handy too if you're trying to remove something or clean something up. Uh, those can come in handy, but not what we're going to talk about right now because we're looking more at compositing. So some things that are useful in compositing. Right now I have my background here. In another video you're going to see how I cut these out, but I have two objects here that I want to work with. So the first thing I might want to do is scale these objects to size because obviously they're too big for the background. They're giant size objects instead of normal size. So in order to resize this, I want to come up to Edit and Transform, Scale, and I'm going to get a bounding box. I'm just going to zoom out really quick here using my Command plus and minus or Control plus and minus if I'm on a PC. Um, and then I can go hold, ahead and hold Shift because I want to maintain the proportion. If I don't hold Shift, this is the type of thing that can happen and your instructor will notice it is distorted. Uh, and I want to judge exactly where I think this starts to become the correct size beer for that table. So I think that's about the right point. The, I want to repeat a similar process with the nuts here. I want to go to Edit, Transform again, Scale. You notice there's other options there such as Rotate. Again, I'm looking at the proportions here. Is this approximately the size it would be in real life if those two things existed next to each other? Um, another one I might want to do with this, we notice this bowl is not quite the right perspective to this object. Um, in the case, this is not a nice square object. If you have a nice square object, there is a perspective warp that is super helpful and I highly recommend. However, and it has instructions and we'll walk you through it. However, in this case, this is not, it has no square surfaces. It'll be far more difficult to match. So I'm going to select this perspective warp. And this is going to allow me to alter this. Um, tugging on the corners and stuff until I match closer the table. And it is going to want to kind of do that snapping thing you just saw. So I'm going to keep playing with this until I kind of hit and I might have to fight a little bit its desire to snap like that. Don't, I know it'll be frustrating, but don't be surprised if it does that. It's not that you're wrong, it's just that the program's a little difficult. So I'm going to play with that until I get it a little bit better. So that's another easy option in order to change stuff. There's a limit. You cannot take someone who you've shot from the top and get them in the perspective of the side. Um, Photoshop is not as magical as people like to believe. Something else to realize about layers, I can move these layers and arrange what order they're in. In this case, you don't really notice a difference, but if I unlock the background, for example, the nuts could go away completely because I put it behind it. I also have a couple options here when I do color edits. Um, so I could come up with a layer select and go to image adjustment and select any of these color tone edits. These will become, if I do it this way, destructive color edits, meaning they will go ahead and um, be permanent to that image, not allowing me to easily undo it. I can also come down here and there's a range of the same 
options. Um, so some embosses, I can add adjustment layers, I can add groups down here, I didn't want to add that actual group. I can add all my exposure levels or adjustment layers are here. Um, so I have those options here. Let me I hit layer mask and I really do recommend the video will show, the next video will show some cutting options not using layer masks because it will prevent you from doing some of the color editing you want to do in the future. Um, layer masks are great if there's a reason to keep part of the image, but in most cases I don't really need to. Uh, so the other thing I might start to add here is if I put these objects in, they don't look believable. So they don't look like they're actually sitting here because an object would have some type of shadow. So I can come up here or at the bottom and do new layer. Um, I could give it a specific name, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use one layer to do the shadows for both. So I'm going to click this layer. I'm going to come over here. And so unlike Illustrator and Design where we have stroke and fill, we have foreground and background here. The one that's the upper left one is always the foreground. The one that's below or the bottom right is always the background. Go ahead and select black. I'm going to go up here to my paintbrush and I'm going to look here at my options. Look at the brush. So hardness is zero, which is good. It has feathering. It won't have a hard, rigid edge. But I'm going to make the brush a little bit bigger so I have a little more control and I can kind of get a, uh, a bigger, more varied uh, shadow going. And I'm looking to, so I can see that the shadow, I could see the shadow actually originally in the nut background to use as a reference. But I can also see the lights kind of consistently here. So that's something when you pick photos you really want to think about. Are all the objects sort of consistently the same? But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start by putting in a larger shadow. Probably larger than it seems correct to you while you're looking at the sunscreen. You're going, wait, that doesn't look any better than what was there before. But I want, for this first step, a larger shadow. We'll go back and add a more subtle shadow, but right now, larger shadow. And then I want to come up, you'll see normal here in the layers panel. And because I've already played with this, I know I want soft light. So notice it just makes sort of the ground there a little bit darker, which is exactly what I wanted to have happen because I want two levels to the shadow, the more faded out part and the less subtle, more directly by the object part. So now I'm going to add another new layer and I'm going to come back and this time I'm just going to add a little bit by the edge of the object to give it a little more ground. Um, and you, you'll play to get the exact thing. But now it looks a little bit more believable in the space. I could always, if I decide that's too dark, there is some opacity here. I can pull back a little bit on it and get it maybe looking a tiny bit more believable, but still pretty close. So I get the idea that there's a shadow on the table as well as the object itself. Um, if you, something to note for those of you who have trouble, the history panel here. So normally if you use Command Z or Control Z, you can step backwards. In this case, you can't. You have to actually come here to the history panel and select. You can command Z or control back one step, but after that you actually have to use the history panel. So that's another thing that's a change and can be a challenge. But that gives you a general idea sort of of where to find stuff in Photoshop. Um, there are also different filter effects, but probably not as needed in compositing. You're more going to concern yourself with image adjustments and scaling and modifying the object like here. Uh, and then paying attention to your layers and which layers are on top and which layers are on bottom. Remember, if you do edit your image up here, you're going to go ahead and do a destructive edit, meaning it's permanently altering your photo. Um, it won't necessarily alter the source file, but it will alter this one. And if you add a adjustment layer down here, it's non-destructive and can be removed. The other nice part of doing it down, using one of them down here, your instructor can see it. 
There are some limitations on what you can see. I'll show you match color, which is one that's super useful, but that also is a more destructive one and not available in the, the options down here. But that will get you started 